Hey guys, it's Gary Wong from GaryWongRealty.com again. Uh, today, I'm just going to talk about some uh, things I think your realtor should know. Um, this was brought to me actually uh, several, like about a couple years ago. Uh, my client said to me, hey, you know, like uh, zoning requirements, da da da. Nine out of ten realtors don't know this. So what I did was I came up with a list of things that I think, um, you know, I came across in the industry that I think realtors should know. So here's my. Uh, they're no. They're in no particular order. I just put top ten. Um, but number one, zoning. You know, it's important to know what zoning it is. Uh, your home or your house or condo. Um, for condo, you just it's easy. You just uh, you know, call the city hall, ask them what what's give them your the address, and then they'll tell you what the zoning is. Uh, you can also put it go into your local city hall's website, go into the GIS map, put in the address. It'll tell you what the zoning code is. Um, for houses, this is more important. Zoning is more important in the sense that in Vancouver, especially. Uh, a lot of buyers out there are, are in, the, uh, in the trend these days of buying homes, tearing them down and building new homes. You know, they want a new home with um, laneway house and that kind of stuff. And they're all into real estate development, um, you know, building apartment buildings, using a couple, uh, uh, like several homes uh, lined up on, on the street. They want to tear them all down and build an apartment building. So it really depends on the zoning. So. It's very important that uh, sellers um, and realtors know what zoning the the house is. Uh, when I when I look into MLS and I see zoning as RES, I know the the realtor um, is incorrect. They th there's no such zoning as RES. RES stands for residential. That is not a zoning code. Uh, they just I don't know for whatever reason they didn't want to look up what the zoning code is. Um, so like, for example, RS1 is very different from RM4, RS1 you can build a single detached home, uh, RS, RM4 means it's, you can build like an apartment building. So there's a very big difference in, in um, what your home is worth, if it's RM4 zoned or if it's RS1 zoned. Also RS5, RS1, sometimes there's different uh, policies that, uh, that the city has incorporated that that uh, is more lenient towards RS1 versus RS5. You got to check whether you can build uh, laneway homes on this kind of zoning. So anyways, the point is you should know your zoning. Your realtors should know their zoning. Number two, UST, underground storage tanks, stands for underground storage tanks. Back, uh, if your home is built, if your single detached house was built um, before 1970s, uh, there are chances that there was an there is an underground storage tank underneath the home. Uh, back in the day, when your home is not connected by gas, they heated homes using oil tanks. Um, so, but what happened when gas came in? They either took out all the oil and removed the oil tank. Uh, sorry, they either removed the oil tank or they took out all the oil or they just plugged it or cut the wires, right? Cut the tubes. But the problem is, uh, if they just cut the tubes and there's oil still in the tank, um, the, t the tanks only last like 25 years. So eventually corrosion and oil will leak out of that tank and contamination will spread, lawsuits come and um, there's a huge, yeah, it's, I can go into like a lot more talk about underground storage tanks, but um, just to know, your realtor should know about underground storage tanks. They might not they, pro, they might not know if your property has one or not, but your realtor should know about this topic and maybe recommend you to get an oil tank scan and if you find one, remove it and that kind of stuff. Okay. Number three, measurements. Uh, I don't know, you know, for strata, it's very simple. Uh, you order a strata plan, you get the uh, you get the measurements. From the strata plan, it's in square meters. You convert it on Google to square feet. Very easy. You put it in. Um, measurement of rooms, you just measure the rooms, right? With a you know tape measure. For houses, it's simple too. You just go uh, on uh, the city hall's GIS map, and you put in the address, and it'll show you dimensions of the lot. Uh, very simple. You know, it, it bugs me when I go on MLS and I see new listings, and they they don't have any measurements. 
on the lot. It's like, it's a one minute job. You just put it in the website, okay? So, um, yeah, so measurements, uh, you know, some larger homes, 5,000 square feet, you might not want to measure every single room by yourself. And uh, what I suggest, you know, you can easily just hire a professional measurements company. They charge about 10 cents a square foot. They measure patios, balconies, garages, all that stuff. Uh, pretty good deal. And they also provide a floor plan. Really nice 2D or 3D measurements. Number four, condo restrictions. Uh, condo restrictions like pet and rental restrictions. When I take my buyers out and I go see a condo, I ask the uh, listing agent. Most of the time they know, like the pet restrictions are this, rental restrictions are this, but on odd case, some of them don't know. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? They're like, oh, I haven't ordered the strata documents. I don't know. Um, for, for this kind of thing, I think uh, the, the problem is realtors, a lot of them, they don't, um, they don't order the strata documents until they get an offer. And I think I don't agree with it. Uh, there's no rule that you have to or not, but what, let's say I'm listing my, my seller's home and buyers come and go look at the house and say, Hey Gary, um, you know, tell me about this apartment. Like, uh, is it rain screen? Is it repiped? Is it how many units in the building? Is, what are the restrictions? You know, it looked really bad if I said, Oh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I haven't read the strata documents. They say, Oh, what about the strata council? Is it, are they proactive? Have you read the meeting minutes in the past two years? Oh, well, I, I don't know. I haven't ordered the strata documents yet. You know, that looks really bad on me. So I, I tend to, you know, I always read the strata documents when I have a listing and so that I'm able to answer this, these simple questions, right? Pet and rental restrictions, uh, you know, have they done a depreciation report? Have, is there an engineering's report? I, I should know that, right? Common, uh, CP and LCP. CP stands for common property. LCP stands for limited common property. Common property, uh, this is referring to condos. Common property is property that is owned by the strata, it's hallways and that kind of stuff. Uh, limited common property is properties that's also owned by the strata but has given you exclusive right to it. For example, your balcony. It's common property, but it's uh, it belongs, it's LCP, limited common property. It belongs to the strata, but they have given your unit exclusive use to that property. So why is this important? This is mostly important for um, uh, parking, parking allocations. So when you look at uh, the strata plan, the uh, if the parking is uh, C, if, if the parking area is, is notated with uh, CP or C as in common property, that means the parking allocations were allocated by strata council. They decided, oh, you, you're in unit one, you take uh, parking stall number 10, right? If it's LCP, let's say parking stall number 10 belongs to unit number one, then it belongs to unit number one. You know, nobody else can use it. But let's say, Let's say uh, a new, let's say parking stall number 10 was a handicap spot. It's a handicap spot and then a new owner comes in, they're handicapped. They need an, a, a handicap spot. If yours is LCP, then they can't touch your spot because it's limited common property. That stall is exclusively for your unit. But if it's common property, Strata goes, oh, well, you know, um, you don't really need a, con uh, a handicapped spot, so we're gonna give that parking stall uh, to the uh, to to uh, the new handicap owner, and then you take their spot. That's why it matters. CP and LCP. Okay. Number six, owner built versus spec home. If this is a brand new home, you have to find out whether it's owner built or whether it's a spec built home. Okay. You gotta look into uh, the homeowner protection office. Find out because if it's uh, not to go in too much detail, owner built homes, um, they don't necessarily need to uh, purchase, have a warranty like a 2510. So they need to, the owner built homes, they provide the warranty themselves because they built it because they don't necessarily um, uh, need a special license to build the home, okay? <clears throat> Spec homes, they need to have a builder's license and all that stuff. Uh, there's also a homeowner disclosure statement that I can talk about later, but uh, very easy to find. Go to HPO, Homeowner Protection Office, pump in the address, 
and you'll find out whether it's owner built or whether it's a spec home. Uh, realtors should know that. Number seven, authorized or unauthorized suite. I go into homes and I ask the, uh, the, the seller or the listing agent, oh, is this suite authorized or unauthorized? They should know that, right? Uh, you know, if it's very easy to find, you just call the, you know, don't trust, like, you know, the seller might go, yeah, yeah, it's legal, legal, but, you know, in, you should do your due, like, realtors got to do their due diligence and they should call the city hall and says, oh, you know, and ask, do you have a permit for this suite here? Or is there, you know, because if it ever gets to court, um, use, uh, realtors just saying, oh, you know, the owner told me it was authorized, that's not gonna, that's not gonna save you, uh, save a realtor, by the way. So, um, you know, if you're a, yeah, so realtors should know whether the suite is authorized or unauthorized. Number eight, title search. Uh, title search just says who is under the, who owns the home, um, are there any charges, are there any mortgages, easements on the title. You gotta conduct a title search and find out that information. You might not know the specific details of every charge, but you should know a rough idea of what, you know, what those charges kind of mean on a title search, you should know that. Uh, number nine, x You very easy to find. Call City Hall, you know, was this an x -grow? Very, Very simple, you know. Uh, was it remediated? When was it remediated? You know, very easy to find, realtors should know that. Number 10, last, last but not least, um, if you're selling a home in an area, you should know a little bit about the area. Is there gonna be community development here? Is there, are they gonna build a mall next door? Are they, you know, there's an empty land over there. Is, realtors should know what's going on in that community if there's anything in the community plan. Very easy, just go on City Hall, go on the website and check. Uh, look it up. If it's Marple, you just look up Marple Community Plan. What are the uh, future plans um, in that area? Okay, very simple, 10 steps, 10 things that realtors, I think realtors should know. Uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Subscribe, Gary Wong from GaryWongRealty.com and uh, I'll see you soon. Have a good day.